what, what exactly is that you do here? She said, we give rest, respite, and rejuvenation. Just call this a retreat, you know what I'm saying? He broke out that warrant for her arrest like you got... <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for a recap and review of Hulu's original TV drama, Harlots. Season one, we were introduced to two competing whorehouses or brothels, as they like to be called. Um, we got the Wells Brothel. Uh, they kind of more down to earth, you know, street service women. Um, while Quigley, on the other hand, who is um, a gangster in her own right, she got the more bougie, more refined ladies of the night. You know what I'm saying? So, if y'all want detailed recaps on season one, go over to Be Fabulous You channel. All one works. I did not recap season one. I'm not even sure how this is going to actually go. If it's going to be a recap or if it's going to be a review. So, we'll know when it come out of my mouth. Um, so, you're going to get episode one tonight. You'll probably get episode two um, posted by Saturday. Um... But have your notification bell turned on so that you could know if you enjoy this show. So uh, if you've never been to my channel before, let me explain to you what I do. I do TV show recaps. That means I go over the entire episode in its entirety in my own words. You may get a review mixed in with that. And sometimes you may get some of my personal opinions or experiences as well. I cuss a lot. All right. Sometimes I change the names of characters. Um, and I do it on purpose. Sometimes I pronounce words the way I want to do it, and I do it on purpose. But you'll know who I'm talking about when you, if you actually watch this show, even if you don't. So I appreciate you being here. Let's get into this recap. Uh, these episodes don't have names, so this is just episode one of season two. All right, so Charlotte. You know, she back at the Quigley's brothel. That's where we last left her off. And the thing that they're having that night must be Greek, um, the the naiads, you know, the water nymphs. So, and it's this funny looking character, this dude, he and her trying to touch the merchandise, so, so to speak. And quickly, it's like, no, we're not about that here. Mm -mm. You pay, you play. That's how it works. Three gold sh uh, guineas for each of them before you can play with any of them. And so, Nance, the one I call the pirate wrench, um, she's doing her own thing too. You know, she got her own little. Uh, little ladies of the street. These motherfuckers of the street. They straight ghetto and hood. Her whole hood whores be out there getting busy on the dog on the street. So her one of the her famed ones is one of my favorite characters, Violet. Um, you know she walked around leading this man through the street and everything. And she basically ripping his ass off. <laughs> she just snatching his money and going. Well, Florence, Miss Miss Scanwell, she's the our um good Christian or good Bible fed woman, right? She's out there perched in the center of it all, preaching her good gospel about all the sinning that's going on around her. Not realizing her own daughter, Amelia, is in love with Violet, the whore. So, quickly, son, Charlie, he's still smashing old Emily. And, um, Violet, she gets caught the fuck up. Then the men take off running, chasing her, like, stop these, stop these, stop these. Everybody's walking around this town like this is some normal everyday shit, you know. She running through screaming like, help me, help me. And everybody like, hey girl, hey. Hey girl, hey. Like this is set in the Elizabethan era. Um, and even though slavery existed, uh, a lot of the black people here had their own paper. So they were not slaves at this particular time. Um, so, you know, same shit, different day going on around here. Because uh, Margaret Wells, she is married to the black guy, Will North. And they got a son together and everything, right? So, But Margaret is finally addressing Harriet. Now, Harriet was the wife or lover of one of Margaret's favorite customers, you know. And uh, she been making eyes of Will. I got my eye on you, Harriet, right? And he like, what the fuck are you saying? So they have this big blowout in the house, like... Like, come on, Will. Everybody could see the way that this girl was looking at you. Everybody could see it but you. And um, he like, this is just your green eyes of jealousy. We're at work, Margaret. You know, yeah, da, da. Margaret got a mouth. She got a motherfucking mouth, baby. She, hey, cuss mold and a cellar. And she gangster, too. She done killed motherfuckers before, too. So, Harriet is like, you know, I will not stay around and be maligned. I said it last season. 
she got it. She got it for Will. She won't Will. But Lucy in her, she is banging it out. Lucy is one of Margaret Wells' daughters. She's the 15 year old youngest thing. In the Elizabethan area, not area, in the Elizabethan era, normally the job of your mother is the job that you have too. So since Margaret Wells was a whore, she's now running a brothel, her children are basically set up to come into that line. Her oldest daughter, Charlotte, is one of the most famed whores around. Everybody wants a piece of her. But little Miss Lucy, you know, she just lost her virginity. Um, and everybody's trying to buy her out now. But then she's in there banging it out while all this fighting and fussing is going on in the house. Um, Harriet, uh, Margaret is like, you know, Harriet, you got to go. You got to go. You got to go now. We was like, this is not about her. This is about us. With Harriet rushing to the room where her kids are ready, like, come on, y'all, let's go. We, we've so overstayed our welcome. Let's get up and go. Shit about to hit the fan. And Fanny's like, no, you can't go. You know, Kitty, all concerned, too. There's some other horse to live in the house. And she tell Margaret when she leave it out, if you doubt your man's affection, baby, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Right? Yeah, do. Stop the lies, Harriet. Stop the lies. You know you want you some wheel north. You know you want them. Anywho, Fanny's like, what the hell is going on? Because... She told me that I would be the next to go, you know. Fanny um, is one of the whores in the house that just had a baby. You know you ain't been had no baby up in the goddamn whole house, but Fanny is that person. So, I was like, uh, Fanny, girl, Margaret is on the rampage. Leave it alone. You better leave it alone. You do not want to say anything that's going to get your ass kicked out this house right now. This house is a total fucking mess right now. Kitty, she running away Johns and... And then uh, Margaret tried to offer the John to Lucy. And Lucy like, so you finna give me Kitty sloppy seconds? Like, what? Because Kitty is basically her, um, since Charlotte done jumped ship and went over to the, her opposing person quickly. So Kitty is like her next best thing that's up in the house. Um, but Lucy is the prize because that's her daughter. So she's like, no, bitch, I don't do that. I don't do her sloppy seconds. So Kitty went chasing out the Harry like, you can't go. Mm-mm. Harry, like, baby, she killed a man with her bare hands. Speaking of Margaret, you better leave, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we go back into the crib, and it looked like a will is leaving, too. Margaret is like, hold the fuck up, you know. She was the poison, and now the poison is gone. Everything is A-OK -okay between us. But he's like, no, the poison is that rich man's corpse that is rotting over in the mausoleum. I was like, is he finna leave, and he gonna take Jacob, too? Jacob was their little son. That'll be a fucking blow. But she said, you know, he, no, he told her, you always follow your path. Okay. Um, now it's time for me to follow mine. Deuces. I'm up out of here. He go out the house. He don't take Jacob, though, because Jacob is like, Daddy, don't leave. Paul, Paul, where you going? Go on back to your mama now, boy. Go on back to your mama, right? So, um, <sighs> Margaret. She be taking some L's, baby. She be taking some serious L's. Fanny like, look, he better bring his ass back her soon because, like I said, I'm next. And you know damn well that she did not want her to stay there with that baby. And, uh, yeah, she gonna be next. So, Margaret is like, you know, uh, no, Kitty say, you know what, let's get out of here. Let's do this on our own. We can go make some money off these rich dudes. Me, you, and Harriet together. Fanny is like, <laughs> nah, that ain't gonna happen. Well, they got a new judge, because remember, uh, I think it was Runliff, Cunliff, Cunliff got killed last, last season. So we got a new judge in town, a new magistrate. And he over at the Quigley's. Sure to come through, you know, glade, gliding down the steps. And he like, what's your position here? She said, my position. Upright, side saddle, bareback, recumbent. What's yours? <laughs> to google side saddle i thought that maybe i've been missing out on a sexual position or something um yeah i've done that one it's i don't i don't care too much it's, it's more fit for people that like to do anal the way the position is oh uh, yeah i ain't gotta do side saddle anyway um quickly is over there really trying to smooth with this dude like you know he don't give no fucks about what she talking about he ain't giving two fucks he ain't giving no fucks at all to nobody up in there she offer him um Charlotte and everything. He like, what what exactly is that you do here? She say, we give rest, respite, 
and rejuvenation. Just call this a retreat, you know what I'm saying? He broke out that warrant for her arrest. Like, you got, <laughs> got this old cheap, run-down-ass place selling coochie on the side. Oh, I'm taking your ass in. <laughs> Quickly laugh. She fought out laughing like, surely you just. I know you playing, right? He like, no, nah, baby, this ain't no laughing matter. This ain't no laughing matter. I was thinking, um... That Charlotte set that up. But she seemed a little bit surprised that, you know, she was gone. But she was pleased as punch, though. So, my Margaret and the Pirate Wrench, they out there chatting about everything that they about to lose, you know. And, um, Naz told her, you gonna fuck around and lose it all. You know, the Pirate Wrench, she told her this. And she said, no, look at you now. I told you all this. So, little Mama Cherry, she run up and tell Naz that Violet got caught. And how Sally is going away to jail for a whole damn month just for scratching her coochie out in public. So, they head over to the doggone uh, jailhouse, the courthouse, to talk to the doggone magistrate. And I'm like, they're going to lock all y'all up. They're going to be in image together. You, Quigley, the pirate wench, and wait, all y'all going to be in there together. Mark was like, I ain't going over there. Mm -mm. She say, uh, <laughs> is this why you ain't got no damn friends? <laughs> Margaret felt so convicted she decided to take her little butt along. Well, Lucy is down there trying to convince Will to come back home. And he like, look, your mama vexing my dog on spirit. And she's like, look, if you don't come back, she's going to be vexing my neck. So you need to come and bring it on back home. But she said, you know what? I know you didn't screw that girl. I know you ain't fuck her. So Will say, um, I do care about her though. But I don't care about her in the way that your mama think I care about her. Um, it's something about our freedom, her, the freedom with her and her children that makes me appreciate it. Lucy's like, ain't nobody free. Ain't nobody. Girl, you free as a bird. You free. Come on, Patty LaBelle. Fly. You free as a doggone bird. We well, say, so I ain't going back. Matter of fact, tell your mom to send me my stuff. So, the pirate witch, she rushed on into the Justice Center. You know, they holding violence trial. It's a little journalist, journalist outside. I think his name was Holland. He uh, questioned margaret about uh the deaf old asshole george and he's like you know did charlotte really do it you know whatever you know she didn't have my her, she was in my headlines for a long dog on time let's get some more news on her maybe they go inside this judge said violet was sentenced to seven years of servitude in america So basically what that means is that she's going to be sent to America to be a damn slave for seven years for pickpocketing. Is that how they used to do that shit back in the day? Like, I know damn well somebody better help Violet out. I know that shit. Like, they bring in Quigley next, and Margaret is like, what in the entire fuck is she doing here? Like, he charging her with prostitution, and he fined her 500 pounds. But, short, but Violet got seven years for pickpocketing this motherfucker out here selling bodies and stuff and you give her 500 pounds he was like either you pay that or you take your ass to jail she was like well i need time he said well, okay i'll give you some time jail time <laughs> and like when violet was up there trying to you know get her sentence amelia was pleading like hey she's a good girl don't do that to her seven years of servitude that's too much you know people like hey get, pay her a fine give her a fine but we quickly, everybody like, yep, get the bitch. She kidnapped us. She criminal. You know. <laughs> Old flowing scam where well, like, look at God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So, Margaret and Nance, the pirate wench. Sometimes I would slip over and call her Nance. So, y'all know that's the same person. They aim to get Emily to um, admit that Quigley kidnapped her. And they want her hanging from the rafters. Just, you know, body just dangling. So she go grab Holland and like, hey, I got a story, a story for you. You know, print this shit. So Charlotte is taking this opportunity to take over uh, Quigley's house. She let all the girls go out and have some fun, you know. Emily is in there singing praises to her arrest. But she said, Nance, I ain't going to testify against her. So Quigley, she said, Quigley going to get out of jail. She going to hunt me the fuck down. And then I wake up dead. I'm not finna do that. She's gonna make me worm food. Charlie's like, look her. I don't want my mama dead. But she do deserve to rot in jail for what she did to my boo. Um, but I get golden square. If she do that and a whole lot more. 
shit started looking a little more promising. Charlie is such a dweeb. He's a dumb, he is a dumb dude, like for real. But he is in love with him some damn Emily. So Margaret stopped by and tried to get Amelia to uh turn to. But Amelia is like, only concern I have is getting Violet free. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad somebody's looking out for Violet and shit. They in jail branded her damn hand and put a big ass T mark on her. What the fuck does the T mean? I don't know. Um she get back to her cell and spit right in Quigley's face. Now Quigley's first name is Lydia. I never call her by her first name. She, I just like Quigley when it comes across my tongue. So, um, and I'm like, I love you, Violet. I do. But spitting in people's faces, that is one of my biggest pet spitting. I can't stand the seed. I would have whipped your ass for that one. I'd have whipped your ass in that jail for that one. So Charles and Emily, they come back over to uh the gold in the states, you know. And they like the takeover shall begin. This is about to be my house. And I was thinking, um, Charles, you really ain't no match for Charlotte, but Charlotte got things to do right now, so she can go ahead and leave. Um, but Amelia go to the judge to plead for Violet. Like, look her. Let her. She gonna be a good girl. She could be redeemed. Trust me, she was on the path to redemption. I know she's been stealing a lot of shit these days, but that's all she do. She can be a better person. And, you know, they egged him on enough that uh, he gonna at least consider it. He said he gonna keep his eyes on her. He keep his eyes on Violet. He ain't gonna see nothing that she's just a little bit violent. <laughs> you know, because she's one of the power wenches girls. So, meanwhile, um, the power wench and, and Margaret, they not having any luck with getting anybody to turn on Quigley. So, the new judge starts to dig a little deeper on, in Quigley himself. Like, hey, so I heard rumor that you kidnapping and body snatching and shit like that. Torturing people. He know damn well that she did it. He just got to be able to prove that shit. Um, and he's like, so who freaking your spot then? She was like, well, your bosses, the people who put you in office, the one who gave you your doggone job, and you could have walked among them, but you didn't hear acting like a damn fool. And he said, oh, my predecessor, the one that's dead. That's who was walking among them. Let me set your ass straight for a little bit. With his stuttering ass, he had to... <laughs> he said, I do my job, and I cannot be swayed. <laughs> And she's like, really? Why are you keeping visitors with me? Ain't no visitors coming to see you, girl. Don't nobody want to see you. So Margaret swallowed her pride. No, Pyra went and told her, look, you need to go over there and talk to your daughter. Get Charlotte to confess, too, because Charlotte knows some shit, too. She swallowed her pride and go over there to fetch Charlotte. And, uh, of course, you know, she ain't there. So she's confronted by Emily. Well, she got beef with Emily, too. Emily got beef with everybody. And she tell her that she might want to think about what. Uh, Nance had told her to do and Emily said well Charlotte went to the jail to go bail out her new mama so you might want to think about that shit right there well on the way to the jail Charlotte ran into her little sister Lucy and Lucy's like I don't get it what, what the hell are you standing for she in jail she locked up you can come on home but it seems like Charlotte is um, hell bent on taking her down herself um, her mama thinks that she turned her back on her. She's like, Lucy, like, you need to talk to Ma. She's like, nah, I ain't gonna talk to her. What the hell I'm gonna say to her? She said, well, fine, I ain't gonna talk to Pa because he ain't coming back. You know, we all is their stepfather. So, uh, <laughs> she tell him, no, he left, I left, you should leave too, Lucy. You should leave too. Well, now that Quigley, Quigley is locked up, how she locked up with money on her, first of all? Let me ask that question. But anyway, she passed this little bribe over to the dog on uh, jail watch and to pass a note for her. He take her little money, but say, April, for pen and paper, I need a little bit more. So she tried to give him more money. He took that shit. He said, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I need this crank yanked. <laughs> I, I need you to introduce my Peter to your Rosie Paul. I'm surprised he didn't ask for head, for real, but she choked his chicken for him. And uh, then he came back and took a damn wig, too. <laughs> like my wife needed up off you. So Lucy is ready to uh, get out and do her own thing. You know, she tried to get the girls to come with them. Like, let's find out some rich suckers and keep our own bank. And Kitty and Fanny, you know, they laugh at her. But then when she get ready to bounce, Kitty is like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go too. Margaret forbade both of them. And she said, Lucy, you ain't going on damn where Lucy say the fuck I am. Pieces. And she left. Then she dared Kitty to move. Kitty didn't move. She didn't fucking move. Well, meanwhile, uh, Quigley's note gets taken over to Fallon's sleazy ass. It's always creepy. Oh, I can't stand Fallon either. And he like, fuck her. Let her rot in jail. 
you know, and Wales, she ain't gonna be no damn issue. I can silence her by cutting out her damn tongue. I would take pleasure in that shit. So Charlotte make her way over to the jail. At first, she asked Quigley where her damn money was at. And I was like, does she really want to know the money or does she really try to get her out? I wasn't sure. I ain't sure what the hell is going on with Charlotte for real. Um, but then she said, you know, since Charles ain't coming here and Charles know that I'm in here, he done took over the doggone money. I ain't got access to it anyway. And uh, Violet looked at Charlotte like, really, bitch, you really trying to get her out? You really came for her? I curse your ass with my sentence. That's what I'm you know. So quickly let Charlotte know, you know, she got some secrets on other people. That's the, a woman's best kept weapon it's a secret and she said I, um those secrets can help me do anything i need to do so charlotte was like okay well what secrets you got who i need to see she said i got something that can ruin lives with one sentence somebody named lady fitz so i was assuming that lady fitz was gonna be Liv tyler and i really wasn't sure if that i was like happy that Liv tyler was gonna be on the show because her and amanda look so much alike to me except amanda's short and shit but they look so much alike to me and then i see in the um the steel shots, the promo photos, they got Liv like dead and center like she the one that's running shit. So I was like, I wasn't, I like Liv Tyler, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like her to join this show. Um, well, Fanny come on down and um, ask Margaret, okay, let me get this straight. Am I the one that's going to be next to go, me and my baby? And she's like, girl, bye. I'm not no monster, you know. Margaret say, you are my best girl, you know. Um, but you can keep your baby, you can keep her until she, she, <laughs> Until she weaned. <laughs> now, now get yourself ready and go make this dough. <laughs> Margaret, come on, girl. Now, that is a bit monstrous to me. That's a bit monstrous to me. Well, Fallon had somebody pay Margaret a visit. And uh, he tried to punk her by dropping a heart on her doorstep. And Margaret's like that. She used to scare me when I was 10. I ain't scared no more. She a kidnapping bitch and she uh, must be stopped. And... What she say? You must be somebody's pussy boy coming around here doing all the murders for her. And, um, dude was a little shook, you know. He's like, this is not how this is supposed to go down. So he kind of ran off. But Charlotte makes her way over to Lady Fitz, and she's not welcomed there. And sure enough, it's Liv. Um, I, I always see Liv as the little young girl that was on Armageddon. I know she's supposed to be older, but she was still young there. Armageddon is like one of my most favorite movies ever like whatever but um whatever quigley got on lady fitz you know is it uh it's enough to buy her dog on silence you know so at first she tried to diss and dismiss charlotte but yeah she told her look come on back here in the morning i'm gonna give you what you need uh her brother holding all her money i i think that was the thing back then the women weren't able to control their own money so where else is it like that and may tell. Women couldn't control their money, too. Well, back at the manor, Emily has broken out the bubbly. Well, the port. Because wine ain't bubbly, right? That's champagne. I don't drink, so I don't know. Anyway, they having a party. She put on her finest garb, or in other words, Quigley's finest garbs. And Anne is like, I will not participate in this madness. That's not what I'm about to do. You are not about to get me in trouble, because she will be back. And Lucy is hanging out in the bar drinking and picking up uh, Johns and everything. She run into Fallon old creepy ass. She has gotten a real foul mouth lately. I guess you no know, stabbing a man till he was almost dead. You know, make you grow up a little bit, huh? So Harriet, old slick ass. I, t I told you something about Harriet that just, mm, her old slick ass come up into the block bar and find Will. You know, she, he like, I'm sorry, you know. She was like, oh, I'm not. I don't think I'm sorry for this. I didn't tell you how it really feels. She all smugging him up. He all drunk as a skunk and he ain't reciprocating. But Margaret walk in and see that shit. And like, this this bitch but finally my boo thing. I thought that she was finna go in and go ham on Harriet. Ring her motherfucking neck. But instead, she confronts Will. And Will is uh with some little drunk soldier. And the little drunk soldier trying to fill up Harriet a little bit. Will stood up and uh, punched him or some shit like that. He took up for her. And Margaret was like, so you, you finna take up for this bitch's honor? Is that what you finna do? They get into exchange of words like, you know, I, um, I think he told her, like, leave me be or some shit like that. And it, matter of fact, go fetch my things first. Um, when Margaret heads out, you know, head hanging low, all realizing that her marriage may really be over. And then Rosalus 
he used to be like um, the little snitch for Quigley. He rolled up on her and like, look her, I will testify for you. I saw it all with my own eyes. I don't know the name of the doggone man, but if I see his face again, trust me, I got you, boo, right? Well, Will is inside still boxing the old drunk soldier dude. He boxing him now because he applied at the fact that he was talking real uh, quick to damn Margaret, speaking to his wife crazy. And I was like, this is why I don't drink. Because <laughs> every drunk in my doggone family get real violent like this. Half time they probably don't even know why they was fighting after they sobered up. I figured that I would be just as crazy and turn out like them fools. Fighting and carrying on for no damn reason. Well, oh, Fallon old creepy ass. And that's probably how I will always address him as Fallon old creepy ass. He stops by the Wells' um, brothel. And he tricked Kitty into going with him. I'm saying she about to end up dead. She is about to end up dead. Cause that motherfucker, he is ruthless. Emily finally decides that uh, she gonna go ahead and speak up to her. I'm gonna go ahead and snitch. And the whole point is because they want to get Quigley's fortune, be in control of the house. And uh, the pirate went like, you got big dreams, don't you, baby? Hey, it don't hurt to dream. It don't hurt to dream big. Well, Margaret, she come back home with Rosalind and tell her, look, hey, I got a witness. And they, and they ask, uh, the pirate went just like, yes, Emily gonna talk too. And they think they won. But then there's a knock on the door. Baby, baby, baby. They had cut Kitty's neck. They done slit her from east to west. I knew she was going to die. They dropped her ass on that doorstep like now. Y'all don't sing a song again. Go ahead and sing out again. Who the murderer? Who the kidnapper? Who it is? Nobody. I didn't think so. Man, Fanny broke down. Fanny broke down. Lucy broke down. It's just a sad affair. Just a sad affair. Rosalus was looking out the door. At first, I thought he was looking to see if he could see who did it. But he took off. I say maybe he three sheets to the wind himself. Baby, that is the end of Harlots Season 2, Episode 1. Thank y'all for y'all patience. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for joining me since I didn't do this season last year. And like I said, it's probably going to be more of a recap than anything because I don't know if I'm really giving my points of view as much like I would do in normal uh, reviews. But it may change as I go along. It may change. Anyway, um, because this is a two-night premiere, I'm going to, again, try to have that recap up on Saturday at the latest. I am on vacation again. <laughs> Taking a little trip up to Detroit this weekend. I want to thank y'all for being here. Like the video if you feel so inclined to do so. Comment down below. If, you think, if there's anything you think I forgot, leave that down in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And hit the notification bell on your way out. So that way you can be notified of every video that I put on the channel. I thank you for being here. Y'all have a good weekend. Peace.